Lander Studio's powerful AI mastering now has a new home, your DAW. With the new Lander mastering plugin, you can use AI to get stream-ready audio in seconds. And with an extremely easy-to-use, user-friendly UI, you have everything that you need to dial in your mix and get the perfect sound that you're going for, all inside of this one plugin. Now let's see how it works. Okay, so this is the track we'll be mastering here today. Everything is mixed the way that I would like it to be, and now we can get started with the mastering process. Which over on the mastering track over here, I do have some RC20 just for a little bit of vinyl too, and uh, some wobble effects, but that's it. Nothing really else going on. All right, here we go, and it's now waiting for our playback. For the best results, add this plugin to the master channel, done, and play the loudest part of your song. So I've looped this eight bars right here for more of like the hook or just basically the loudest part of the track. And then once you hit play, AI will be listening to your track and finding out the best ways and the best settings for your individual master. All right, this video might be a quicker one here just because the AI is so powerful and does so much for you that really all you need to do from here is just tweak the settings. So now that we're done over here, we've got our master track. Here's what it sounds like without touching anything. Honestly, you could just leave it like that and be done. You can call it a day from there. But I would always recommend dialing in the settings for your individual track over here. So let's go and do that now. Now, the AI did a lot for us over here, so we don't need to be making any drastic changes. And personally, I don't want my ear to be fooled by the difference in volume, so I'll be going over to Gain Match, where I gave myself a little bit more than 6 dB of headroom. And if you ever do find yourself needing to have more headroom, you can go over here and adjust the input gain. But now going on over to the settings over here, we've got three different options for the Warm, Balanced, and Open. So the difference here that I'm hearing is that uh, warm sounds like the bass in this uh, in this song sounds a bit more grumbly, definitely more pronounced, uh, and then open on the other side over here, as it says over here, a modern open sound with an emphasis on punch and presence. And then balance is going to be somewhere in the middle over here with uh, clarity and depth. Personally, I think that balance is where I'm going to be sticking here for today, but something more like lo-fi, warm would be pretty nice over here, and then open over here if you're finding yourself that you need some more presence. But no matter which one you pick, we've got some other settings over here to help us really fine-tune our sound. First up over here is going to be the equalizer, which we can change the low, mid, and high frequencies. making some very small changes over here. Just really fine tuning. Don't want to be going crazy by going uh, to any extremes over here. Just making small adjustments. Very straightforward over here. Now the next thing I think really helps change the sound is going to be the presence. Of our clarity. I know that everyone favors the low end and the bass and everything like that, which, I mean, so do I, but adding some presence to those higher frequencies really helps add some clarity that you really, really need in a song. All right, next thing over here is going to be the de which I don't have any lyrics in this song. So for now, we can just move on over to the stereo feel, which we can add more focus or make it sound more wide. I think that uh, adding stereo, is it's very easy to go overboard with mastering. You're obviously applying that effect to every single sound all at once, which includes the kick and the bass, which are usually more mono instruments. But not only that, you can lose some punch in the kick and the snare as well. So if you feel like you do need some more stereo, feel free to add it uh, tastefully. I would not go anything crazy. And for this track, a little bit wider does work, um, but for something more like hip hop, I might actually decrease that a little bit, but that's again, personal preference and what you decide to do. Okay, now the dynamics over here. What, again, one thing that you have to really do tastefully. Compression is definitely one of those things that you can extremely overdo, especially while mastering. So going to the left, we'll be taking away compression, and then going to the right, we'll be adding compression, which is a pretty dramatic difference between the two. So once again, keep your genre in mind. If I was making something more like hip hop or like trap or something like that, I would actually probably 
decrease the dynamics a little bit and the compression just because you want those peaks. We want to glue them, the track together, but we don't want to sound squished. But this track is not overly focused on transients the way that hip hop would be. So we can go ahead and increase that a little bit. All right, now for the knob next, it's going to be the character, which we can change the behavior of the compression from fast and punchy to slow and smooth. Also helping out with some certain genres and uh, getting back some of that punchiness from the compression as well. And then over here, adding some saturation too. And now for this big knob over here, it's going to be the loudness, okay? This is where mastering really helps take into effect. Which, once again, remember, we're at gain match over here, even though there's a limiter on there, it won't go above where it was before. Now this one, it's very easy to get uh, to get fooled here. To most people, louder just sounds better, right? But you can really mess up your dynamics here by going too overboard with the loudness knob. By increasing this amount way too much and going overboard, you can lose the punchiness and your entire track will sound a lot more squished. Now yes, in this case, it doesn't sound all that bad. It just depends on your individual track. In fact, when I'm mastering something more like, like hip hop or lo-fi or something like that, I will actually decrease that a little bit because I don't want my transients to get messed up. But I do think that the loudness over here is the most powerful tool of any mastering plugin because it will increase the perceived loudness of a track without changing the actual volume. So looking over here, whenever I move this knob up or down, this will not change. It's a great way to make your track sound even louder than it should be. Okay, looping the same four bars over here, here's what it sounded like beforehand. Now with Blender Mastering on Gain Match. So now that we've fully gone through all the settings over here by matching this track, I actually want to go and show you guys a few different options. This is a completely different track that I've made, definitely more on the trap hip hop sort of side. Right, now grabbing Lander Mastering and hitting play. Alright, so the AI is done mastering over here, and for this one, I won't be talking about too much what I'll be doing because we already went through all the settings. So I'm going to show you guys just how fast you can go through this process using the Lander Mastering plugin. I think I'm pretty much done. All right, talking a bit about the process and the choices that I made here. This track is definitely a trap beat, so I want to focus more on the transients over here and don't want to squish the, all that much. I want to have that dynamic range. Uh, so for the equalizer, I made the mids po uh, poke out a bit more and the high end a little bit for a little bit more clarity as well. The low end sounded pretty good. Going to a warm uh, sounded a bit grumbly again. Then for the presence again, I really like this presence knob. It adds it very tastefully, not to overdo it. Uh, again, no lyrics, so I didn't mess with the ds or at all. And for the stereo field, I actually decreased the focus slightly. I didn't really do too much here. Uh, just do it by ear, and I want this transients to really poke out and stay in the middle of the mix. So I didn't want to have it too wide. Again, if you want to apply that to more something more like your melodies, sure, go for it. And then the compression, once again, don't want the track to sound too squished, so I left that in the middle, while then bringing back some of the transients with, by turning it to the left. And for the dynamics over here, left the compression in the middle. Again, don't want it to be too squished. And the character to be to the left a little bit to add a, a little bit more overall punch. And then why not some saturation to add a little bit more presence as well. And for the loudness over here, increased a little bit, once again, uh, Really squishing your track is a great way to destroy a, a transient-based hip-hop beat. So I squeezed out a little bit more loudness over here, but I think overall a very clear difference over here. Once again, gain matched. Definitely 
added a lot more presence here. And one thing that's really different from other mastering tracks is I don't feel it's squished at all. Okay, it's a very straightforward plugin here. It's gonna be a shorter video for sure. There's not really too many more tests I can do over here that make a, dr a drastic difference in how you perceive the plugin. I don't make songs with full lyrics anymore, so I can't really go over the de -er section there, but very impressed with this plugin, especially with the AI and how easy it is to really tweak the settings here. I would go through like a pros and cons here, but I really don't see any cons. The plugin does not really take up a whole lot of CPU in the slightest. It does the basics very well, if not trying to do too much, and makes it a very simple UI so anyone can use it. Like I've used quite a few different AI mastering services, plugins, stuff like that, and this one so far, the AI makes it sound very clear without going overboard. So I think that this was a huge win for this plugin. The Lander AI mastering service on their website was already great. But now that you've got that same service inside of a plugin, inside of any DAW that you choose, which is already a huge change, you don't have to export different tracks and upload it to a website. The ability to hear your master inside of your DAW means that you can make tweaks to the different instruments there and get the exact perfect master you're going for. But not only that, this mastering plugin is going to be included in the Lander Studio Pro plan, where you have a bunch of other tools at your disposal here. Royalty-free samples, tons of different plugins, plugins and courses how to be a better producer, collaboration with other like-minded producers, and then also distribution for your tracks as well. If any of that sounds good to you, check the link down below and get started today.